Yo, we back like four flats on the Cadillac. So, um, today's story time is definitely not an easy story time for me to tell. It's a, you know, it's very personal. Um, even even today, I have a hard time talking about it. You know, reliving it because it was it was, it was very traumatizing and shit. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. And I went through shit like this at that young age so that I can be who I am today. You know what I'm saying? But everything we go through, especially as youngins, affects us as adults. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't want to hear nothing. I know that for a fact. You know what I mean? So, um, with that being said, let's get right into it. So, um, you see the title, Abandoned at the Age of 15, right? But we ain't going to start there. That's actually the end of the story. I'm going to take y'all back a few years. So, I'm going to take y'all back to mid to end of 1993. So, just to paint a picture for y'all, uh, it's at the house on Linden. At this time, it's me, my older sister, and my mom. Um, we 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 uh we were living we were living not too long before this. We were living with my pops, but um, they had got divorced, so it was just us three, which was actually a very very amazing time for me, for all of us. Because um, when my pops was there, it was it was all bad. Um, you know, he drank a lot at this time. They were young, you know what I'm saying? My parents were very young, so they probably didn't know what they were getting into, whatever, but they just couldn't get along. So we witnessed a lot of violence, a lot of shit that, you know, kids shouldn't be witnessing. Um, I won't get too deep into that part, but just know that, it was wicked, you know what I'm saying, for for a youngin to go through that. So me and my sister, you know, we went through a lot of shit for many years. So by this time, he was he was out the picture. So life was really good, you know what I mean? We felt free, all three of us, even my mom, she felt free. You could tell she was just a happy person. She started going out again, you know, started spending a lot of time with us. And it was awesome because I was an ill mama's boy. You heard? The only child, the only son, my fault. Not the only child, I was the only boy. So I was always up under my mother. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so with that being said, um, like I said, towards the end of 93, this was, this was already like six months after I got hit up. I was already recovered from it. Um, I was already back in school. Cause I stood, I was out of school for about about a good ninety days after that joint. So um, I'm already back in school and all that. Um, and almost, it felt like almost out of nowhere, this dude moves into my building. He moves downstairs. I think he was renting a room downstairs. So um, days are going by, and I'm seeing my mom conversating with the dude they'll sit at they'll sit on the front stoop and they'll just talk whatever 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 um so before you knew it homeboy was in he would it started off on the stoop then he would come in the house and then like before you knew it his shit was in there he and he had he moved in you know what i'm saying so i never liked him from jump my sister never liked him from jump, and he never liked us from jump. It wasn't hard to tell, you know what I'm saying? Even at that young age, 13 ain't that young. I can tell he wasn't, he wasn't fucking with us, you know what I'm saying? He barely spoke to us. You know, it started off bad from the beginning. Um, okay, so now time is going by. The dude don't really say shit to us. Um, it seems like he only wanted my mom for himself type shit. You know what I'm saying? 
They was always locked in the room or they, or they would go out. So at this time, I'm getting way less attention from my mom, right? And it's, it's not, you know, it's not sitting right with me at all. Um, so um, I know it was my mom that did this, but she, she kind of forced him to ask me that I want to go and play for this little league team, right? So, because my, my mom knew I loved baseball, right? So, of course, I said, yeah, hell yeah, because we couldn't afford it. You know, I, asked, I used to ask her a bunch of times. We could never afford it. So, um, she knew that if, if, uh, if he asked me, I was going to say yes. You know, I guess that was just like a little tactic of her to get me and him to probably get along, you know, which it worked. It worked because I loved baseball. So he took me to um, to this park in Yonkers called the Glen Park. Um, and in the Glen Park, it's a little league team or a whole league called Packoy. I think it's Packoy Boys and Girls Club or something like that. Um, and I got in. It was lit. I loved it. I found out that I was actually was really good at baseball. Um, it's a lot of... A lot of big names come out of at a come up out of Packoy, you know. We were we were we were um the league had like every every kid in the league was very, very low income, you know, from the slums. But we kicked ass, like we used to kick ass, you know what I'm saying? Um one dude that I remember that was on my team and it was very nice. Um, if you're from Yonkers or Westchester, you probably know the, know the name, was Jay Nam, the rapper. He was in my team. That's how we met. Excuse me. That's how I met Jay Nam. He was nasty. He was even better than me. He used to come out in the paper and all that. But anyway, um, so eventually I decided I just didn't want to do that shit no more. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't want to, I was chasing girls, I was turning 14, just about, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm liking girls, I'm chasing girls, I, I don't got time for this baseball shit no more, you know what I'm saying, so, I quit this shit, I just stopped going, I just didn't want to do it no more, right, so, being that the only thing holding us together, me and homeboy, was baseball, once I quit, he went back to not talking to me again. Right? Just wouldn't say shit to me no more. He wouldn't say good morning, wouldn't say shit, nothing to me. So I wouldn't say shit to him. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the one that's supposed to be looking for you. I'm 13. So time time keeps going by. Now this is when um life gets starts to get even more weirder, right? So um homeboy had two kids. They were basically property of the state since they were babies. Um, they were in group homes and, and, and foster care and shit like that their whole life because he was in and out of prison. As a matter of fact, when my mom first met him, he was just coming home from doing five years for a shooting. Turns out um, his brother had got hit up. His brother owed some people some money in Yonkers. They caught him slipping in school street shot him with a sold off in his in his gut, you know, shit bagged him and all that, hit him up nasty. So um homeboy that's with my mom, he ended up catching the dude that shot his brother in Getty Square. He he had a thirty eight on him, revolver, he emptied the whole shit, gave him he gave him the whole six and um but the dude didn't die, so he ended up doing like five years. So when we met him when my mom met him, he was just coming home from that. Literally, like a day before my mother met him, he, he was coming home from doing them five years. So, um, all right, boom. So he got two kids of his own, but they're in the system. So my mom gets it in her head to, yo, let's, let's get your kids, let's get your kids. You know, she just kept beating him in the head. He didn't, want, he didn't even want his own kids, to be honest with you. But she beat him in the head so much that he finally said, all right, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's go for it. So my mother does the paperwork, 
And sure enough, they give the two kids to my mom. So we move from Linden because obviously now we need a bigger spot because it's, it's now, check how my life started making changes, drastic changes, right? It went from me, my mother, and my sister to me, my mother, my sister, a dude that don't like us and his two kids that don't know us that ended up having major issues because if you know kids that grow up in the foster system like that from babies, they got big issues, big mental issues, it's just big issues. So now this is what we're dealing with. So life got real ill for me, right? So around this time is when we find my mother gets Section 8 and we move to a bigger spot across town on the south side, which was Hawthorne and Pear Street, the block that I'm always talking about. This is the block where I ended up planting my flag, you know what I'm saying? And never leaving after this. So, but this was when I was first getting there. It's about 94 now. So I'm 14. Life has changed as I know it. You know what I'm saying? I'm no longer the same innocent kid. Um, you know, I don't see my mom so much no more. You know, because homeboy got all her time now. You know what I'm saying? And really, I'm not, I'm not just saying it because I was a mama's boy and this and that. Nah, it really went down like that, you know? Because cause, cause Duke was basically a baby himself, you know what I'm saying? He acted like a little kid himself. I don't know if it's because all the time he did up north or, or what, but he was like, you know, just, he acted like me pretty much. So, um, so by this time, I'm starting to rebel against them, you know what I'm saying? Because... I just feel like, man, this shit is foul. You know what I mean? This shit ain't right. This shit is wicked. So I start rebelling. I start doing shit like coming home late, not coming home at all. Me and me and this is when I meet my man, Little Los, right? I, I met him first. He was the first person I met on that side of town, Little Los, which is my brother, man. I ain't seen him in a while, but this dude is my brother right here. So... I meet Little Los. Little Los got his own issues, his own family issues and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So we two young ass kids running around the South Side. And to be honest, we would go at that age, we would walk from the South Side all the way to No Dean Hill. And if you're from Yonkers, you know for a 14 year old, 13 year old, that's a hell of a walk. But that's the type of shit we would do. We wasn't getting no type of attention at home, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so I, we would do shit like that. One time, me and Little Los had these two young girls. We was young though; they was our age. We had these two little young girls in our in my apartment, and my mom's and Duke come in and catch us, you know, just shit like that. I was just rebelling, which I should have been, you know, cause what was happening to me was foul, man. So, um, so one time, um, I find a magazine, a knife magazine, where they sell like, um, Rambo knives, the little switch blades. It's, it's, it's like a hunting magazine with mad knives in it, right? I find it in my house. So I take the shit to school and I'm already a little hustler to make money. I'm telling all the kids that they could order any knife from this magazine. Whatever it costs, they got to give me $5 extra on top. So if the knife costed 20, I wanted 25. This is how I was going to make my money, right? So believe it or not, I got like 40 orders. These are all little kids, right? I'm in seventh grade. I got like 40 orders from these kids, most little white boys. Most of them was like little white boys and shit. Cause they had the, they had the money, right? So, I actually really did order the knives though. I got the, I don't remember if I got a money order. I don't remember what I did, but I actually I think I just sent all the cash in the envelope, and I 
because the, the magazine came with like an envelope where you could just put it in, seal it, and send it out with all the orders, right? So I, I, I fucking sent this shit out. One day I come home from school and my mom is sitting there with the only grill. And there's a box, there's an opened up box right on the table. So I come in, I know something's going on because I know the face, you know? So she's like, come here. I'm like, what happened? She like, sit down. So I sit down. She like, yo, explain this. So I'm like, what is it? She opens up the box. It's the 40 knives, right? <laughs> so she like, what is this? So I just, I explained to her what it is. I'm like, oh, no, nah, that's just some knives that I ordered or whatever. I'm selling them at school, right? <laughs> so she's like bugging out because I'm 14. So she's like, what the fuck you mean knives that you're selling and this and that? You know, it just, it was wild. To me, it was nothing. To her, it was like crazy. But here go the crazier part. She was mad about that. But what she was more mad about was that I used Duke's name because since I was so young, I, would, I was smart enough to know I can't use my name. I got to use an adult name. So I took his name, you know, Duke, that's in my house, filled up all this shit like if I was him and sent the knives out. So he's catching a fit because I used his name to order the knives, right? So Mom Dukes is really upset at this because he ain't saying shit to me. But I know that in the room... Behind the, behind the closed door, he's riffing. And Mom Dukes don't want to have to deal with the big baby riffing. You feel me? So she's really upset at this. So this, this incident right here really cramped shit up for me and my moms. And definitely for Duke, right? But always keep in mind throughout this whole story my age. I'm 14 now, right? I'm a baby, though. Okay, um, now this is when shit get crazy, crazy, right? We end up moving again. Now we move to 218 Buena Vista, right down the block. We move to a big house. It's, a, it's just one, a one family house. The whole house is us. But it's really a two family house. So you got the first floor. There's um, the kitchen, the bathroom, the living room. The second floor, you got like four bedrooms. And then there's a third level, which is a whole nother apartment. You got another bathroom, another kitchen, and like two bedrooms. So what happens is Mom Dukes and Duke take the top joint. Me, my sister, and his two kids take the bottom joint, right? So, from this point on, I barely see my moms anymore because it was almost like, it wasn't almost, it was literally like we lived in two separate apartments, right? So my moms would do food shopping and she would just fill up the fridge downstairs and then bring all her shit upstairs and we would just barely see them. Well, Duke, I would never see. Because now Duke is happy as fuck because he got his own place. He don't got to deal with us kids. You know what I'm saying? Which is wicked when you think about what I'm telling you, right? So, of course, at 14, my sister, 17, the other kid, 13, and the girl was probably 11, right? What do you think these four kids are going to do completely unsupervised? For days and weeks and weeks and weeks, right? We're going to wild out. We're going to do whatever we feel like doing just because we can, because of our age. You feel me? So sure enough, we wild out. When my mom finally realized what mistake, what big mistake she had made, it was too late. My sister was pregnant. Cops was knocking on my door. I had shot somebody. I told y'all that story. That was all at this house. I had shot me somebody. It was all bad. The, the little girl was, was running away. The kid, the boy, was fighting every other day. 
Because I told you, you they got issues because they came from the foster joint. So this kid will go play basketball and fight the whole motherfucking basketball court. And, I mean, we literally had no, no parents, though, at this time for months. You know what I'm saying? So, boom. It gets worse than this. Check this out. So, when my mother realizes, like, yo, this, it's, we're out of control down there. It's over. Like, you know, what the hell am I supposed to do now? So, instead of saying, let me come downstairs, let me get these kids in order, let me, you know, whatever a normal person would say, Duke talks her into leaving us, right? So this is how this shit went down. My mother sits me down one day, me and my sister. Wait a minute, let me rewind a little bit because the plan that they did was wicked. They didn't tell us nothing they was planning on doing, right? But check out the steps that they took. So about a month before, Duke had called the foster care people or whatever you call them and told them that his two kids are out of control and that they need to come and take them back, right? This is wicked, bro. So to sure enough, they came and took them first. They went crying and kicking and screaming back to foster care, right? So me and my sister, we ain't really thinking too much of it because they his kids, you know what I'm saying? It was foul what he did. We didn't know why he did it, but he did it. So a couple weeks later, my mom sits us down. At this time, I'm just turning 15, right? My mom sits us down and she says, y'all got two weeks to figure out where you're going because we leaving, we moving. So when she say we moving, I'm thinking she's saying we're moving, right? So she's like, no, 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 you ain't understanding what I'm saying. In two weeks, me and Duke is moving. We giving the apartment in and y'all got to figure it out. So I'm like, figure it out? Like, what you talking about? I'm 15, figure what out? So she just said, you know, you heard what I said. You got to figure it out. So, of course, I'm not taking her too serious because never in my mind did I say or did I think my mom, the mama's boy, is going to be left like that. You know what I'm saying? Never did I think this. So, sure enough, the two weeks come around. I come outside and there's a big ass moving truck loading up my motherfucking house, right? So they loading up, I see Mom Dukes, and I'm like, yo, you know, what's up? And she's like, what's up with what? I told you you had two weeks. So I'm out. And she fucking packed up and left. Me and my sister literally seen the truck just drive away. If I'm lying, I'm flying, bro. My sister just had gave birth, right? So now, I'm in the street, my sister's in the street, and my one-month-old nephew's in the street, right? So boom, my sister gets lucky because a neighbor sees what's going on and tells my sister she could stay with her because of the baby, right? So at least I felt better that my sister and my nephew was, was going to be okay until I figured something out. So um, me, I masked out. I'm like, damn, I got to figure something out. So I dips off to the block. I don't tell nobody nothing, right? I'm just trying to figure something out. So this first day go by, I'm chilling with little Lowe's, couple other dudes, and I'm fronting. It's getting late, and I'm fronting like, yo, what's up? Let's break night. So that first night, me, the other niggas didn't break night. They stood out late, but they end up going home little by little. Me and Lowe's break night. I'm acting like this is something I want to do. You know how I used to break night back in the days, drinking 40s and shit? So that night, it worked. We break night. Early that morning when the sun's coming out, Lowe's daps me up and says, yo, I'm out. I'm going to sleep. So I get up and walk towards Buena Vista, but I'm fronting. 
I'm like, I don't got nowhere to go. So I just walk around Yonkers until people start coming outside to hang out. And then I just, you know, just start mingling, act like I'm just coming out, right? That was the first night. Second night come around. I still haven't ate. I'm tired. But I'm still trying to figure it out, right? So I try it again. I'm like, yo, what's up? It's break night, son. This night, Los was like, nah, son, I'm too tired, bro. You wildin'. Let's go home. Sure enough, I'm fronting again. But this time, it's, it's like 12 o'clock in the morning. Dap him up. He goes upstairs. I go walk towards Buena Vista. That whole night, I just walked around, walked around, sat in park benches, trying to doze off. It was wicked. You hear me? It was wicked. So, um... Like four in the morning comes around and I go back to Buena Vista to where my sister was staying at because the room that the lady gave her, she had her own entrance. So I go into the building and I just tap on, on the door where my sister's staying at. So she cracks the door open and she's like, yo, what happened? Because she don't want to get kicked out, you know what I'm saying? Which I understood her too. But I'm like, yo, what's up? You got some food? She's like, nah, I ain't got no food. And I'm like, yo, I can't stay. Like, I can't just rock out with you. So she start crying. And she's like, yo, I can't do it, you know. I can't get kicked out with my son, you know. I'm not going to have nowhere to go. So she start crying. I start crying and shit because, you know, I'm her, I'm her little brother and she see me. I'm dirty. I'm hungry. She could see me, you know what I'm saying? So um, I just break down and shit. And I just walk, I just walk out. So the third day, I can't take the sleep no more and shit, right? So um I end up, I'm able to, I'm able to hang out and shit though in front. But that night comes around and I go to my man Gabby's building, his hallway, because I know that there's a little couch there. So I'm like, fuck it, I'ma sleep here, right? So I go up in there, I doze off, I fall asleep. So, my man Los, Gabby, and my man Tete end up coming in like three in the morning, some shit. And they catch me in the hallway sleeping. So they drunk and shit. And they like, yo, look at this nigga. They start kicking the couch and shit. So I jump up. And they like, yo, what the fuck you doing, man? So I'm fronting. I'm like, nah, I was just a little tired. I was waiting for y'all. I just dozed off, right? So they laughing. They ain't thinking nothing of it. But my man Los, he knew better than that. He knew something was going on. So he pulled me to the side, and he like, yo, son, what's up, man? What's going on with you, bro? You know? So I just break down, and I tell him. I think I start crying and shit, too, matter of fact. And I just tell him, like, yo, son, I'm homeless. Mom Dukes dipped on me and this and that. He couldn't believe his ears. Nobody could. So he like, yo, bro, he was mad at me because he like, yo, why you ain't tell me three days ago? You know what I'm saying? So long story short, he like, yo, we crashing here, and in the morning we going to my mother and we going to tell her what happened. So that's what we did. We go to his mom's. Sure enough, she like, yo, you can stay right here. So from that day on, she basically made me her, her third son, you know what I'm saying? Which I still owe her to this day, and I still love this lady to this day. Because what she did for me, a lot of people won't do that, you know what I mean? So... From that day, that's the day that me and Los became brothers. So I stood there, hooked up the room. We became literally brothers. Bought a, bought a whole on a whole extra bed. We got our room. We bunking up. So I start getting to the money. This is when I literally jumped off the porch for real. And there was no looking back for me after this day. Because I vowed that I would never be put in no situation like this again. So from that day... That was literally my fucking introduction to the fucking streets for real. You heard? And I never looked back from that day. From that day, I started just going crazy on the streets. And then these is where all these stories come from and shit. The shootings and this and the wars and all that. It comes behind this experience that I had. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. I hope y'all like the story. I know it was long as hell. I know. I hope some of y'all listened to it you know, throughout the whole thing, but if you didn't, you didn't, it's cool, man, 
But anyway, man, I just felt like hitting y'all with that, man. Till next time, I love y'all, man. One.